went to bed, felt good. Lay down on the bed for the first time in nine months was pretty awesome. I just, <laughs> I crashed uh, until the next day. And then just, you know, trying to get up and trying to move around and understand gravity, Go, went through a bunch of tests. And then uh, that evening I got to, afternoon, I got to come home and see my dogs who were waiting for me. So that was pretty, pretty special. It's pretty hard when you come back, and, and it doesn't mean, you don't, don't even have to be up there nine months, like my other missions were six and five months. And you do feel pretty uh, nauseous when you first get back. It's just that inner ear, neurovestibular feeling for the first like 24 to 48 hours. And I knew, having gone up twice before, that it was just a matter of time. So I was like, just push through it. <laughs> you got this. I mean, just make yourself get up, make yourself go take a shower and just push over those things and make yourself walk down a, you know, on a line to just work on all of those little small agility muscles. I, our trainers are doing that with us. Yeah, I'm really excited about it because, you know, we all have different opinions and perspectives, right? So we had a very unique perspective of being in the spacecraft. Nobody else had that perspective. Uh, so I think us uh, providing them with our perspective on what happened and them telling us what their perspective of what happened down here through the telemetry and mission control and then talking about what they've been doing because we've been sort of focused on other things for the past couple months and not really focusing right on all of all of the work that's being done. So I think it's going to be a sharing relationship right there um, and just discussing where we stand and where we think we need to go. But I think that is already the plan um, because there will be new components um, added to the spacecraft, right? Or replaced on the spacecraft. And so we'd really like to test that out, see how that works. So, you know, you gotta t take a step back and look at what tests we could do to prove out those um, those new parts, or do we do another uncrewed mission and see how that works out and see how everything responds to the, the additions that we make. So. Uh, I I think that's just probably a smart, wise idea. You know, this time that we've been up there, we had some amazing solar activity. So the aurora was just incredible. There were times when you'd go to the window and we'd be flying right through the middle of the green aurora. And then you'd come to the edge closer as sun was, uh, the sun was coming up and you could see the reds and you can see the purples of the aurora. I think that was pretty spectacular. We were really lucky to actually be up there to see all that. Um, so that just gives you like the, the sense of like, wonder of what is going on in our universe and, and how much more we have to explore and understand. I think the hardest part was just sort of not knowing and trying to relay that information to family and friends who were worried and waiting for us to come home and try to reassure them that, hey, you know, there's, again, there's a lot of people, there's, there's an army of people working on a plan and, and going to be getting us home at the right time on the right spacecraft. So I think that was just the hardest thing to convince them. And I think one of the ways that I was successful is I started writing a journal and showing them or telling them all about what was going on. And then I started bringing them along with me and then that sort of turned the tide for me.